No, stop. You're going to run into the wall. Oh. Seriously? <laughs> yes. Well, it's a SRAM X01 drivetrain. I know that. Have you ever wondered the difference between all of the different SRAM Eagle drivetrain variants, SX, NX, GX, X01, XX1, and the electronic access stuff? Well, we spent an embarrassingly long amount of time dissecting every single difference between all of these things, weights, price points, features, everything, and in this video, we're gonna explain all of it. So right off the bat here, let's talk about the hierarchy in case you don't already know. Um, which ones of these drivetrains is the least expensive and which one is the most expensive? So on the least expensive side of the table is SX Eagle. And this barely squeaked into the video and here's why. It's not technically like an aftermarket drivetrain. They do sell some parts of it aftermarket, but it's mostly what's considered OE, original equipment, meaning it comes on complete built bikes that you were to you know, buy in the store or buy online. Um, they don't sell all the individual pieces aftermarket as of now. And, Kind of makes sense why they do that, but so SX is kind of squeaking in here, but they don't really actually sell a five-piece Grupo, so we don't have a price for the five-piece Grupo for SX. Um, to move up the ladder, NX. So when we're talking five-piece Grupo, that gets you a crank with a chain ring, a rear derailleur, shifter, cassette, and chain. Uh, NX comes in at $380. GX with alloy cranks, $545. GX with carbon cranks, $685. X01, $1,285. XX1, $1,500. X01 Access, $1,900. And XX1 Access, $2,000. So now that you know what the hierarchy is, what do you actually get when you go from a $380 five-piece Grupo to a $2,000 five-piece Grupo? There is a number of things, and there's a few important ones. Um, later in the video, we're gonna break this all out on a table so you can see visually every single price of each component and the weight that correlates with it. And there's actually some surprising differences. So stick around for that, because it's actually pretty interesting. But a couple important things to talk about right off the bat. Um, NX, the cassette on that is an 11 to 50, and it works with the traditional HG Shimano style free hub body. Um, that is a bit different than the rest of these kits, because once you get to GX and above, uh, those cassettes are 10 tooth for the small cog, and they go up to 50 or 52 tooth, and they use SRAM's proprietary XD free hub body, which is readily available on almost all higher and mid-level to high-end wheels these days. So that's an important thing there. So a lot of people are upgrading to these drivetrains after market, and depending what free hub body you have on your bike now, um, that's a big factor when deciding what fits your bike. So keep that in mind and, and do pay attention to that little research. Uh, the other thing to note is like, there's huge cross compatibility between all of this stuff. So something we see very commonly, if you have a bike that has a Shimano style HD free hub body, you can use the NX cassette and then you can pair it with basically any GX, X01 or XX1 parts as well. Um, and that all meshes together. There's a ton of cross compatibility between all of the Eagle stuff. So free hub bodies on the cassettes are really important. What do you get um, when you bump up from NX to GX? Well, like most things in the mountain bike world, as you spend more money, things get made out of nicer materials and therefore they often get lighter and sometimes lighter and stronger simultaneously. And weight is a, is a pretty big factor on mountain bikes, of course, because you want the thing to be light, you're pedaling it yourself, so that matters a lot. Um, GX now has just seen a recent revision uh, in 2020 with a like, total revamp of all of the components, uh, most notably the cranks. They now offer them in aluminum and carbon. It used to just be aluminum. And frankly, the kit looks so much better. And for 545 for the alloy cranks and then 685 um, for the five-piece Grupo with carbon cranks, it is a huge steal, huge value. And it's probably the most common variant, right? If you look at how many general mountain bikers are out there that have bikes that are sort of in that, you know, $2,000 to $5,000 price point, GX is gonna be an amazing drivetrain for those bikes that's reliable and like just has the most value hands down in terms of performance for the dollar. As you move upwards, um, what are you getting? X01, you know, is extremely similar to XX1. 
the, I guess the classification was supposedly it was more enduro trail focus. So the cranks are a little bit heavier and a little bit more robust. And the derailleur has uh, an aluminum cage versus a carbon cage, which is 15 grams difference in weight. Um, but that's about it. Otherwise they're, they're very similar. And again, you can mix and match all of this stuff right here. So keep that in mind. Um, as you get to XX1, it's more intended for cross country. So it's even lighter, like I mentioned with that carbon derailleur cage. Um, and then of course, access, right? So access is fully electronic. Uh, they only make one, it's not called a shifter, it's called a controller. And that pairs with either the X01 or XX1 access rear derailleur. Um, yeah, super, super killer kit. We made a whole video about access when it came out. They also make a RockShox reverb access to pair it all together. So you have no cables on your bike. Uh, super impressive stuff. But when it comes to how do these things differ in terms of feel, right? So you see price, you see weight. How does that actually translate to when you're riding it? Because frankly, there's really not like any major features I can give you guys. Um, all of these derailleurs feature SRAM's uh, clutch to kind of keep the chain quiet and stable. Um, you know, I talked about the free hub bodies and the cassette range, so that's a little bit of a feature when you're going from SXNX and then GX up. I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Oh, real quick, I actually did forget about a few tiny but somewhat important features that you might want to know. Uh, the SX cranks are three piece, meaning that they don't have an attached dub spindle. Uh, that's a much cheaper and more old school design that's much heavier and inferior in terms of stiffness and durability and everything like that. Um, NX and above does have uh, two piece dub cranks, which is a pretty big difference. SX also does not have a matchmaker compatible shifter, so you can't run a clamp that'll perfectly mate this to your SRAM brake lever. Uh, SX doesn't have the little rolly wheel, so your cable has to stick out and wrap around. It's just not as good of cable routing, things like that. Um, the X01 and XX1 shifters actually have uh, the paddle. You can adjust the angle that it sits. So if you wanted it a little further up or a little further down, you can do that. And it also allows you to remove that and put on a cool little upgrade like a PNW shifty, which you can see here. What does it actually translate to otherwise? Are there any major features? Well, I would say it's not really a quote unquote feature, but it's feel, right? I mean, when things are made out of higher quality, higher quality materials and the machining tolerances are tighter, the feel of these things, the feel in that shifter, the feel of when that chain actually moves over, um, the crispiness, the sound, all of that, it just feels much more high quality as you go this direction. And that's not to say that, you know, SX and NX don't shift well. All of these shift amazing. I think drivetrains for probably close to a decade now um, have shifted flawlessly. And, you know, as long as you're not improperly shifting under load, but even then these things still shift really well. So shifting, as long as it's adjusted perfectly is gonna be great. But the feel of that shifter, the sound of that drill, or the sound of that chain on the cassette, those things definitely make a huge difference. Um, and again, it's not like a quantifiable difference, but it's a qualitative difference. You can feel it if you were to hop on a bike, um, even blindfolded. Oh! Seriously? Yes. Well, it's a SRAM X01 drivetrain, I know that! Shimano. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Where am I? I thought I was over there again. This is an e-bike. God damn it. Oh, it's not even turned on. It's RAM oh, NX. NX, NX, it's NX, it's RAM NX, I can tell. I can feel it. Oh, I almost hit this wall. You could pretty quickly tell like, oh yeah, the feel and the sound of S SX and NX versus X01, especially access, right? Because that's where the feel really changes because you're pushing a button on a controller and it's just moving electronically, which is amazing. So that's kind of what I like to explain to people. I mean, again, if you're really going like on a budget, SX and NX, if you want like just 
absolute value. GX is incredible. If you want creme de la creme, the nicest stuff, the fanciest stuff, um, of course you can go Access or X01 and XX1 um, for the most ultra lightweight stuff that just looks absolutely incredible. So now let's jump into the table and look at all of the weights and prices next to each other and go over some of the insights from that. All right, keep in mind that all of these weights are from our own scale and not the quote unquote claimed weight, which can sometimes be misleading. Uh, in the video description below the blog article that accompanies this video, we have photos of how we weighed all these individual components. So if you're really curious on the weights and how we weighed things, check that out. So there is an asterisk on the SX cranks because like I mentioned earlier, those are three piece cranks, which totally throws off how you weigh them versus all the other cranks here, uh, which are two piece cranks, which have the spindle attached to the crank arm. So kind of a different thing for how you weigh those things. SX cranks are vastly heavier once you factor in the bottom bracket, which has a totally different type of spindle. So some really notable things when you look at this table, the GX carbon cranks are only $140 more and they're 94 grams lighter. But remember, it's not just weight here, carbon cranks have a much nicer and stiffer feel to them. There are big changes in price from GX to X01, $740 more for the X01 five piece kit versus the GX kit with alloy cranks. The X01 group is 294 grams lighter. So that is where you're seeing the really big gap here in terms of price and weight. How big that gap is and if it's worth it, it's frankly up to you. The X01 cranks are 39 grams heavier than XX1. Again, the idea with X01 is to be a little bit more durable and enduro-y, and XX1 being a little bit more cross-country and weight-focused. That goes into the other components as well when you compare these two. The X01 shifter is five grams heavier because the XX1 has a carbon lever blade. The X01 derailleur is 16 grams heavier because of the carbon outer cage that's only on the XX1 derailleur. So XX1 ends up being 61 grams lighter for the kit and $215 more expensive. $215, 61 grams. Damn, it can be expensive being a weight weenie. <laughs> Uh, looking over at Access, the Access kits use all the same components for XX1 and X01 aside from the shifter and derailleur, of course. The electronic versions of the shifter and derailleur are actually heavier than their mechanical counterparts. But do factor in with the electronic stuff, you don't have a derailleur cable or cable housing, and you kind of simplify your drivetrain in a sense, and it's just a vastly different experience having an electronic drivetrain um, versus a mechanical one. You have a lot of different stuff in terms of all the data being tracked by an app of your shift points. You can choose if you want the upshift or downshift click on the lever to actually upshift or downshift. Uh, so a lot of different stuff that goes along with access. We have a whole video on access specifically, so if you're really interested in how the electronic drivetrain is different than the mechanical stuff, check out that video. Well, I genuinely hope that this video helped you out. Obviously, mountain bike components of all kinds can be super confusing, and if you're looking to upgrade your drivetrain or even just understand what's on your current bike, um, yeah, it, it can be complex, and, and uh, the mountain bike world is, is full of tons of stuff. So I hope this video helped you guys out and made you understand what's going on. If you have any questions regarding all this stuff, feel free to always contact us. We're bike shop nerds and talk about this stuff all day and eat, sleep, and breathe bicycles. We also made a video just like this for Shimano drivetrains if you're interested in that. And uh, yeah, to sum it up, Ceram Eagle's amazing. I mean, we, we made this video uh, before, and this is a revised version of it since GX has a huge revision. Access has come out, and so has SX. And this is like, you know, Ceram and Shimano really lead the game in the mountain bike world. My personal preference is Ceram. I love the company. I love their components. I love everything they do. So super, super stoked on what's going on here with the Eagle stuff. And yeah, that's about it. If you've watched it this long, thank you so much. You're really into this shit, and uh, hit that subscribe button. See you guys in the next one.